Hi, I'm Joanne Pollock and I'm here today with Norman Bussey, a local artist from Guelph. And uh, Norman and I have worked together before in the past and I became enchanted with his work a number of years ago um, at an art show in Alora. So Norm, it's a pleasure to be here in your backyard. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we have certainly uh, had a had a, uh, be the beginning of a great art journey together with each yes, other. Yes, definitely. Uh, I wanted to read a quote to you, actually, by Edward Hopper, and I wonder if you can comment on what you think about okay. it. Okay. So Hopper said, great art is the outward expression of an inner life of an artist, and this inner life will result in his personal vision of the world. Agree, disagree, thoughts? Uh, that's a pretty good quote. No, I think he, he sums it up. It, that's what it's all about and you hope that the more true that you are to yourself um, and, and how you see things that that will resonate with, with others because yeah, we're all on our own separate walks in this life but you know, we're all human beings and there is overlap and, and uh, um, I, I, we would hope that there's some commonality and, and that when someone looks at your expression of what you think things are that there's there's going to be enough in there for them to sink their teeth into and for them to start you know looking through their memories and through their image files in the back of their brain from all the years that they've lived um, to try and, and, and piece together what's going on in the pictures so I think he was I think he was pretty much right on with that so that being said um, I I can think of lots of adjectives to describe your work for sure and adjectives come to mind like cinematic, theatrical, engrossing, uh, voyeuristic. Uh, some of the pieces are chilling and tense. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe your style? Um, I, th I think you've hit on a lot of those and I think you could have used a lot of those terms with uh, Edward Hopper's work as well because, um, you know, he was, he was painting sort of through the birth of cinema and you know one of my favorite paintings of his actually takes place in a movie theater and the, you you're looking at the inner life of a very bored attendant wondering whether her shift's done and she's going to meet her boyfriend or whatever but she's not partaking in the event that everybody else who has paid to see the Humphrey Bogart movie you know she's seen it a million times and that's not her job and she's so, so it's a very, it was a very urban thing where, you know, you're in the same room together, but you're not sharing the same event. There's the, everybody has their own inner life and, uh, and so on. And he's, he captured that alienation without being preachy or without, you know, we're not, we don't feel sorry for her or anything like that. And, and in, in my work, you know, you, you, you look at the figures, what do, why are they in sharing the same space together? What's their story? Um, I don't want to illustrate a specific story. I would like you to be able to um, be more like Sherlock Holmes and have to participate and try and look at all the cue clues, what's on the table, what's on the floor, what's going on through that doorway, why do things not quite line up or that, that person doesn't look like they belong in that kind of setting and so on. And then you start creating your own dialogue so you're together. a visual storyteller yes is really what you are so we're going to talk more about it so the title of this piece norman is le grand palais mm -hmm. it doesn't look particularly grand it doesn't look palatial <laughs> <laughs> um no but but the grand palais was um francis bacon's first major retrospective show at the grand palais in paris okay and uh there's some you know dark stories about that if you if you read into it and his um, in behind there is a portrait of his lover jo uh, George Dyer um, who I think that as the story goes he committed suicide or they figured it was suicide in the hotel in Paris the night before the show opened oh dear. and they found him um, deceased on sitting on the toilet seat and then I think they hid the fact that he had died until after the show had opened. So they didn't tell the police about it, which is illegal for about a day and a half. And uh, so I found that intriguing. I also found intriguing that he had uh, for years 
a blind, a, a certified blind housekeeper, and he took her everywhere. He took her gambling to, to uh, Monte Carlo and all these things. And I don't know how she cleaned his house, but <laughs> Great um, house uh, yeah, house you know, uh, <laughs> Great um, gambler too. And she was a great gambler, and and he loved her. It was a, it was like a maybe a mother influence in his uh, life. I'm not sure, but so you know, I was thinking about all those things, uh, and then I I tried to recreate a space that had Francis Bacon, and that is not what his housekeeper looked like, but I found this picture of an elderly woman, and she subs in nicely, and I put uh, some of his work on the walls, and um, this picture has a little bit of that uh, ennui, or um, there's, a, there's a bit of tension, because, Definitely. because just like in a Velazquez painting, uh, the viewer becomes a participant because uh, there are two people in the actually including the dog who's looks half asleep there's the two people who notice that we're looking at them so we've come into the space they know we're here and and there's a little bit of tension um, and uh, that adds that adds the, the I, I, I think that adds the sense or tone of the piece that I had wanted. But none of the figures are emotionally distant or isolating, at, at least the way I'm interpreting things. So she, she very much has, um, is calling us into the scene and begging mm -hmm. us to, to hear her story. Yes. And he has such a direct gaze with the viewer. He too, he, he's, he's got a story to tell and he wants us to know about it. Yes, and he and, and that photo that I picked, he seems like he's um, been interrupted mid-sentence, that he was talking to her or someone else in the room. We don't know if we're the only newcomers to the room or if there's some other people sitting in other chairs somewhere. But, um, you know, those, those sorts of questions, allowing yourself to see into different rooms, um, wondering what the relation, interrelationships are, what were they talking about, how is now you your participant with that how does that all work together I wanted to talk to you specifically about um, your your style of work because it's so intellectual and it's so conversational I wonder if you could tell me what your view what you want your viewers to see in your work I want them to have to uh, work out a storyline on their own um, and I don't want it to be easy for them. You don't make it easy <laughs> no, for them. No, I don't want it to be easy for them. So you, you leave some clues, you leave sometimes, you put some red herrings in there, because if you're an investigator at a crime scene, not everything in the room is of significance. It might just be something they've always had on their table. Um, but there are clues in this one, and it is, it almost looks like a film still from a movie. Um, so, so, so guide us through, just, just, well, the, the title is uh, What Dreams May Come, and um, I've left, you know, some clues you can think, okay, uh, maybe the, the painting on the wall suggests a part of North America, maybe he's in, he lives in Colorado, or maybe he, right. maybe it's something to do with his uh, youthful life uh, as a rancher, you have no idea, or maybe he just likes, you know, Western scenes. It, you, it could be a clue or it could not be. Then you see a wedding photo. You see him by himself um, as an old man. And then there's a, a nude figure on the chair beside him. And But when you look at the nude on the chair, um, the nude is weightless. The chair doesn't have, the cushion isn't depressed by someone on the chair. So now there's another clue. Is she, is she really there? Is she not? The title says what dreams may come. So is this, um, is this just, um, you know, a, a visual manifestation of what he's he's dreaming? Is he reminiscing of, you know, has his wife passed away, right. and he's and, and when he goes to sleep, he thinks about when he's 25 again or whatever, right. and and uh, uh, or. I've also left some other clues. You have those strange, surreal, floating, brassy looking orbs. Yeah. And if you follow the arc of the picture, you end up here. Uh huh. And then I, I looked for a while to find a, a kind of a mysterious art deco sculpture. Mm -hmm. And so you have this uh, other possible thing that there's, you know, that his dreams actually are brought to life almost like a, um, 
I'm trying to think of the uh, Rod Serling, you know. Yes, uh, the Twilight the Zone. The Twilight Zone sort of thing right. where the sculpture, um, you know, the, the, the orb or the sculpture somehow when he sleeps actually activates things that he's dreaming about. And then, you know, you have a, that whole other kind of uh, magical storyline to it. But you're, you, you, whatever you do come with, you realize that he's in the, his family home because the decor here right. suggests a woman's touch. Right. So that suggests, you know, he's keeping things how they, how they were before his wife passed away. And you definitely have, um, he's, a, he's a figure that, that gives you, you, you have empathy towards him. He's having a good snooze. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, and I, I also changed uh, from the photos that I picked I changed the colors of the chairs, so you have red and green and nice, you know, beautiful, beautiful all, all contrast. That. So, one quick question to, to end sort of the discussion is: Where do you want your artwork to go? Where, are you seeing your artwork go in the same direction, in a different direction? Where? What are you thinking about? Um, I've been playing with a few ideas. I mean, if you you look at all of my work, uh, there's there's uh, somewhere I'm referencing art historical figures or, or, or historical figures like William Burroughs or yes. Joseph Boyce or yep. uh, Francis Bacon or places like the Cabaret Voltaire, you know, which then uh, I, it tells the viewer that I'm interested in Dada. So, and, and that's part of what I, I'm looking for. Uh, well, your, your work is infinitely intriguing, Norman. And um, where it goes, Nobody knows, but uh, we're certainly interested to follow your career the next coming, the next well, coming, the years. connoisseur, and um, it certainly is. Uh, it's got a lot of things going on. You've got incredibly beautiful women, and some not so beautiful. And I wonder if you could tell us your visual story about this one. Okay, I think it's <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Um, because it, maybe in the end, I don't know. Sure, fair enough. Um, I, I was reading some articles, and I think maybe what spurred this on was um, the controversy at the Metropolitan about Balthus and how they wanted to take uh, this Balthus painting um, out of the Met. And, um, and then that got me thinking about you know the the whole Me Too movement and you know women in art because ever since uh, you know prehistory there have been naked men and naked women in art and uh, you know it, there's there's objectification and then there's there's the erotic and they're not the, and they're not oh, the same amen, because brother. because uh, you know eroticism is uh, and and sexuality is a, a huge part of Amen. being a human being so I started it as an investigation of that and and the Met is a place of connoisseurship they collect art arts donated to them they show art and so I thought okay well what if I have an interior room with uh, a, an avid art collector and then I can put a whole bunch of things on the wall and and have them be part of the story um, because the fun thing about a painting is the guy in the chair who's the connoisseur he's painted exactly the same way as the people in the paintings are painted. And that's the fun thing about painting is, is it, you know, the thing painted versus uh, the, the, sculpt, the sculpture versus the person standing in the bathroom, they're all painted the same way. And so, well, you know, some are living and some are not, but it's a painting, so none of them are. And it's, it's a lot of fun. But I, I was thinking about just the issue of, you know, censorship or, and, and what this guy has on the wall. And then I was looking at Balthus's uh, opus, and um, you know, there's, there's three here, there, and then a portrait he did of Miro with his daughter, mm -hmm. which is, I think, one of his best portraits that he's ever done. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a, a Bonard, and he painted his wife uh, like hundreds of times, and even after she died, he was still painting those paintings of her in the bathtub, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I, I have his lovely wife or, or, or lover in, you know, in the bathroom. 
and I, I put a, a sort of a, a female um, fertility slash mortality goddess in there. I, I, I basically pieced something together so there's a bit of a kabuki mask and there's a right, bit of, uh, right. I, um, I forget the Greek goddess's name, the multi-breasted goddess, the goddess of fertility or whatever. So I've made, you know, like, tw you know, the suggestions to that. Well. So, so there's so many things in there. If you ask me, what does it mean? I, but it, be it, it, it begs the ask. You know, I even, I even if you look at Bellini's uh, paintings of, of uh, the Madonna, you know, the, the ball suspended from the um, mm -hmm. chandelier mm -hmm. is just like, you know, right over the head of the woman in the window is just like a Renaissance a painting where they had all those symbols of, of, of right. the Madonna's fertility Perfect. with an egg suspended above her head. and Exactly. Yeah. However, we're, I'm most curious about the sculpture. <laughs> on the left. Yeah. yeah, well, I, there's a, I, I, I like, I, I like things to be uh, um, not so much highbrow all the time. So I love Takashi Murakami, and that's what, that's what uh, that crazy mouse uh, figure is. Uh -huh. And you know, he's, uh, you know, contemporary Japanese. That's a traditional Japanese. There's a connection. Then we have the ancient Greek goddess, but. <laughs> she had. I, I found it online somewhere. She has the helmet of uh, Princess Leia in Return of the I Jedi. I was going to say. That's, I so, thought that's what and was I, going and, and, on. I mean, they had some really funny ones with <laughs> with Apollo with the head of Darth Vader's mask, and they had those. But this one was perfect because there's the idea of, you know, um, I guess a, a man's connection with women. There's you know, siblings, mother daughter lover um there's there's all sorts of interrelationships suggested there and then i'm still trying to piece together how i feel about balthus i don't know i i love his paintings and uh when i was in new york with my wife uh on a school trip uh years ago when we first were, were dating um i I absolutely fell in love with the two or three Balthuses they have in this one room at the Met, and mm. they are just so captivating and so perfectly, beautifully painted. Um, and and traditionally slash non traditionally, uh, you know, you could see pencil lines and you could see thick paint, and he just is a wonderful. If you want to learn how to paint, he's a guy to look at. And I just, uh, I and I and I've heard conversations with his wife on video and things and it's it's still I'm still incomplete in, in how I feel about him I think Norm you're the quintessential uh, connoisseur well your work is always fascinating and intellectually stimulating well, thank you and for sure it's conversational Norman so I wish you abundant luck in your artistic career forward and we'll see what happens well, thank you very much Joy. you're welcome